Welcome back to Power On Weekly for the week of March 8th through the 14th. Um, what's today? Happy Pi Day. Yeah, today's Pi Day, 3.14. And happy Mother's Day in the UK, apparently. That's something I learned today. And uh, happy early... Go ahead. Didn't get either of those things. <laughs> no pie or happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in the UK. <laughs> uh, my name is Irving Legend. I am your host. Joining me as always is your co-host, Allie Mayhem. Not, not always. Oh, well, sometimes, yeah. Some weeks, some weeks I... I, uh, I have to call hide. Steve. <laughs> some weeks I hide. Yeah. Sometimes I run from you. Sometimes <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get hit sometimes. with the thing. I know it's <laughs> so it's so accurate. Yeah. That, <laughs> the YouTube sensors are gonna be like, woo! Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, yeah, welcome back sorry. to another episode, everybody. This week we are going to talk about one subject. I'm sure everybody already knows what we're gonna talk about, and that is the Microsoft Bethesda Bethesda deal or Micro Thesda. It is official. The ink has dried, as everyone's been saying. $7.5 billion acquisition is official. Both the U.S. secretaries and the UAE exchange commissions approved the transaction last week. So congratulations to Microsoft on now taking over more of the world. Um, Ali, $7.5 billion. That still sounds like a lot of money. I didn't, do, I didn't pull up my number beforehand. It was like 2.5, I think. Gosh, yeah, so... Um, when the, when this went through, you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But like, I think people just kind of forget how much billions of dollars actually is. And then, um, like a week or two ago here in Las Vegas, the Sands, Venetian and Palazzo, mm -hmm. the whole Sands corporation got bought out for 2.5 billion. And I think that really made me realize how much money Microsoft spent on, video game companies <laughs> because i was like for literally less than half we could have owned a casino hotel restaurants shopping plazas and convention center in las vegas i get the market's not real good maybe it could have gone for a little more later after, <laughs> you know backstreet voice tour but uh -huh. i don't know when i just like realized like living here and like thinking wow that went for 2.5 and microsoft Bought all this stuff for seven five. five. Yeah. I, I finally think I have in perspective how much money they actually spent on that. Like that I, I kind of was mind blown when I really compared the two things. Like two things I understand very well. Yeah. And two things I know very personally. And I was like, that was only worth two point five? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I think anybody else who lives in Vegas also will probably be as surprised as you are because I mean like even if you visited Vegas and have been to the Venetian, like Venetians is massive. It's huge. Gotta be a moneymaker. Yeah. And Palazzo too. And the and the whole convention. The convention. Again, like I, I imagine it probably would have gone for a little bit more, maybe pre COVID yeah. or maybe in like another year or two, like when things start to pick back up tourist wise. So I I I, I get the feeling that it was undercut a little bit regardless, just because of situations. But yeah, like it, if you live here, you're like and you just compare the two. You're like, wow, that that went for two point. Like, holy moly. Yeah. Like a video game company went for way more. And I guess they got a lot of titles and a lot of stuff. But that just I think I guess what I guess really what that's saying is that shows how much money mm -hmm. video games are making right now yeah. and how profitable they actually are. How powerful because, the industry is. Yeah. Because if if a hotel, like again, hotel, casino, like if you haven't been to Vegas, the it, it's multiple hotels it's multiple restaurants it's shopping plazas it's theaters it's convention space a full convention center yeah on las vegas boulevard one of the most walked streets in the world like and that like it, it, it just i just i guess like i said it just kind of shows you industry wise mm -hmm. how much money video games really do make now and if some if they were willing to spend that much on it yeah like it, it's insane <laughs> yeah it's, it's just crazy when you're really like putting two and two together like i said there's something that we both know very sorry very intimately they're both big parts of our lives like obviously the strip video games so it's like it's easy for us to really like understand like <laughs> the money making and the difference and 
I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling now. I didn't take a nap today, so if I'm a little, I don't know. I feel I feel really like I feel loopy today. Sorry. Okay, no, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the transaction uh, has been official, and uh, to celebrate, they had a little round table where uh, they basically talked for an hour with a bunch of people from. Except there wasn't actually a round table. Okay. <laughs> they had a round table discussion. Uh, where they had mix of uh, Xbox, you know, executives and Bethesda executives. Um, all the 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 big shots were there. You had, you know, Tom Howard. You had uh, uh, Tim. I was gonna say Tim Schafer. Um, what's his name? Oh, Papa Phil. How can I forget? And just uh-huh. like you know, uh, what's it called? Aaron Green Greenberg as well. Like they just had a bunch of people. So um, they 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 tweeted out like right before they're like we're gonna have a roundtable, but don't expect anything. Like they made it very clear like this isn't to announce any games. This isn't to announce anything. Like, we're just here to kind of, like, talk about things and just kind of... We're just here to brag, you know? Yeah, honestly, yeah. (laughs) Just to be like, oh, yeah, now it's official. Now we can, like, you know, like, talk. And I thought it was pretty... I thought the the conversation was a lot of fluff. But it's also... It was also really good to see kind of where their vision was going. It was still informative. Yeah. and and, Enough. And we did learn a few things from that. And... It it was kind of, though, uh, you could just send this in an email instead of having (laughs) to go to a meeting. But it was informative. I think it was it was nice that they also highlighted each of their uh, new studios, so then they can talk about like you know what they are working on and how they approach things and like what the what they're excited about the future of this means. Um, because it's not just you know the executives you know just in a lounge having a cigar and like we we're making billions now. It is it's literally affecting mo- like a lot of lives on both ends. Yeah, no, for sure. So um, I think directions of where the companies will be going. Yeah. Yeah. Decisions they have to make. Yep. So we got a lot of clarification on it. Um, They did start out by saying that like and it was made very, very clear that uh, this was a very mutual, mutually beneficial uh, strategy for both parties. Uh, They talked about their relationship that they've had with each other as far as like Bethesda and Microsoft. Uh, They've had a few like exclusive things like Morrowind, I think, was uh, exclusive on Xbox. Um, I think Knights of the Old Republic. Well, well that's actually Bioware. Never mind. Um, anyways, but <laughs> uh, they've had a really close relationship with uh, with each other. So what they said was they, you know, they didn't really see a future in their business without Xbox, and Xbox didn't really see a future without Bethesda. So this was very, very mutual. And I think that when you listen to the conversation, you can really feel that. And yeah, it, it felt genuine. At least between those people. Oh, and it, so it didn't. It didn't. They made it feel like it wasn't just a straight up like buyout corporate buyout yeah yeah like it seems like a, uh some it seems like something that Bethesda is happy to do and yeah. is a relationship they're happy to strengthen yes regardless of any things they may have to give to to be a part of that mm-hmm. yeah I I I felt that a hundred percent. Um, like I said, they've always had a really close relationship with Xbox. So it just, it, it always made it for when I heard about this and especially hearing it now, it just makes even more sense as to why this even happened. So, um, I'm happy for them. I'm happy that it, uh, it it's, 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 we're going to work out for them. So, um, Phil then clarified some things. First of all, Phil, you're a fan of the show. You listen to our podcast. <laughs> He said he listens to the podcast, so clearly that meant uh, Power on Weekly. Obviously. So thanks for joining us this week, Phil. Uh, okay. <laughs> but what, what I'm okay. <laughs> this bad joke. What I'm getting at is that he he hears the fans, he hears the questions, he hears the bot, he he reads the comments, he reads the forums. He want people want to know what this means for the future of Bethesda games. Okay, and I think. It's fair to say that we were we were we're pretty spot on. We were pretty spot on. And uh, he basically Phil looked at the camera and said, "Ali Irving, you know what, you guys don't you don't even have to watch this round table. Just go watch their uh, their episode on the Bethesda because they were spot on. They're they're smart little cookies over there." <laughs> <laughs> so he did. He clarified by saying a few things. Um, he says obviously they have some con um contractual contractual obligations. obligations that they have to uphold, which Ali said. Yes, um, meaning the Death Loop stuff, the Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, but also like they understand that uh, that legacy games, meaning games that already exist, like Fallout, Scott, you know, Elder Scrolls, like all these existing games, they have communities outside of the Xbox ecosystem. They under they understand it and they they acknowledge it and they respect it. And what they said was they were going to continue, you know, helping, you know, 
build those community needs and stuff. So, I mean, we it's not a surprise. We saw it with Mojang when they took over Mojang. Um, and they didn't complete, they didn't rip out Minecraft from phones or, or switches or, you know, PlayStation fours. Once they bought it, they just left it there. They made it clear that they're not doing this. Yes. They want their exclusive. Yeah. But they're not doing this to completely, um, monopolize and ruin the, the already established fan base. Yeah. They, I think they know how dumb that would be if they did for sure. And how angry that would make people. Yes. So. Um, but he then said that they wanted to make it clear that as an Xbox fan or player, this is about shipping great exclusive games to you on the platforms where Xbox and Game Pass exist. So that alludes to me that future IPs like the Starfield future. and any unannounced, you know, Bethesda uh, titles and stuff, uh, probably the Indiana Jones game, too, um, depending on where that was before this acquisition. Um those are probably just going to be straight up exclusives. And um, I think that's kind of where we we figured. Where we figured that it was new games were going to be exclusives and existing IPs maybe might get to the point where they're going to keep going exclusives. But he said at the same time that these games, these legacy games, they want to just continue to support those communities. Well, the, th the thing is, right? And those were kind of are not even predictions but i think those i think that's what we said in our podcast and those were kind of our at least our hopes yeah at microsoft and i think i think we we were pretty confident in saying that though because we, we understand that microsoft understands the fan base it doesn't want to like you know they're not trying to like literally like upset people mm -hmm. but they are trying to just disrupt it a little bit in the sense of being able to compete with playstation a little bit more yeah um i think that Whatever I was going to say, I totally forgot. Nice. <laughs> Hold on. I think so, too. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. Um, I think we were pretty spot on as to what our predictions were. That's all I'm going to say. And uh, I, I do see a future where we get to the point where Bethesda games are just exclusive for Xbox, though. So. Okay. That, that's kind of what I was going to, what I was, I think yeah. I was trying to get at is, um, okay, I know what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Is yeah that that Bethesda um, they understand that Bethesda has a history it has a past and that they understand um, they understand gamers and they understand that gamers are like ride and die and they love their franchises and I think they know how stupid it would be to just divide the fan base instead of like keeping those legacies going and letting people continue to enjoy them how they want to where they want to because yeah. that's their whole thing too right is we want you to be able to enjoy these games. Obviously, they'd rather you be on their ecosystem, mm -hmm. but I think that they really do see that, like, suddenly turning it, I've always played this on PlayStation, but then, well, you have to be on Xbox, would be bad for an already established fan base. Yes. When it comes to new IPs, though, like, yes, I know it's going to burn and sting a little for anyone who's a huge Bethesda fan that isn't an Xbox player, but at the same time, you don't have the same attachment to these new IPs, so it's a little less of a sting. Yes, I can understand where people would still be like, well, I would still want to play on PlayStation or I still want to play here. And I love Bethesda. They're my favorite company. That's where you have to make those decisions in the future. But I think it's just it's it's they're making the right decision in not totally burning a fan base and not totally turning people turning it into a negative where they're if they keep those if they keep producing those franchises and keep them open to the platforms they've always been on. Yeah, those new IPs kind of staying but not the same because there isn't that attachment already there for sure that's what i was trying to there you go i, I knew there, i knew there was, i told you to come back yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no I, I i agree and i think it's also smart for them to not do like cut cold turkey and just like do, mm -hmm. do it do it that way as brutal as it sounds as much as you know fanboys would love for to stick it to playstation fanboys you know i don't think that's like like it's not about that business wise that's yeah. not the smartest thing to do and it also kind of shows a like I think it will help them even more like to to show the benefit and like the value of Game Pass when PlayStation players are paying $60 per game mm -hmm. and all these games start start to come out and it's like $60 per game when you can just do 15 10 bucks a month for Game Pass and just be able to have access to those games all of them Yeah and and seeing that value and it's like why would I you know but I think I think that's also goes into what people's perspective are on Game Pass cuz I still have put people on 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 Xbox Live that I play with, that they're like Game Pass. I don't I don't have Game Pass. I was like, how do you not? Like, how do you not have it? I don't <laughs> uh, know. Oh, I was just gonna say the the other thing is, um, again, just just for like obviously like the respect of the fans to keep producing and keep them avail available and open. 
financially, it doesn't hurt them at all to do it either. It doesn't hurt them to play, to keep playing ball with the other side and with like PlayStation and everything and keep releasing them there. Exactly like, because exactly what you were saying. If you're not in our ecosystem, you're paying full price for that. And you know what? That's not even because of expert. That's not even because of Microsoft. It's not Microsoft saying, hey, yeah. like we're doing this to be, to be jerks. It's because PlayStation doesn't have the, the contract. PlayStation yeah. doesn't own the, and PlayStation doesn't have their own version of this thing. So it's not even like, 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 um, they can be like, oh, well, that's not fair. It's like, no, this is on your system at this point and your, your system choice. Like I said, so at the end of the day, yeah, they're going to lose some money to licensing fees through PlayStation and all that, but they'll still make the money off, off of those purchases. And like, it's going to do one of two things. They're going to make probably more money on selling directly to those consumers at full price. Or it's gonna it is gonna do what they want it to do, and it's gonna convert people. Yeah. People are gonna go, wow, it's a much better value for me to play these games on that ecosystem. Really, it's just it comes down to for Microsoft, it's it's a win win. Yeah. And I get them wanting to do the exclusives because they're more concerned with you being on the ecosystem versus the money. But again, if whatever they decide to do, it's almost better the more they put out um, for the other consoles, the better it is because it's, it just continues to show a better value. Or um, for moving to Xbox versus it being you have to come to Xbox. If they're coming by choice because of value, then like that's an even bigger win yeah, in their books. It's, it's an easier transition as opposed to, as opposed to like strong arming them into yes, coming yes, here. Yeah, exactly. Instead of strong arming them, giving them those options, but having it be like, yeah, you have your option, but look over here. It's a better value. But we get it. If you're really that stuck on it, yeah, you're still put the, the paycheck still come to us. A portion of that paycheck still comes to us. Yeah. So I think I think I think honestly, the more they they do keep it non-exclusive, the better they're gonna the better that it's gonna be for them. And yeah, no, for sure. Uh, speaking of Game Pass, uh, Game Pass, Game Pass, <laughs> uh, twenty Bethesda games have been added to Game Pass. Uh, games like Dishonored, the definitive edition, by the way, that comes with both DLCs. Uh, Dishonored two, Doom one, two, three, sixty four, and Eternal. Prey, Wolfenstein one or uh, one. Wolfenstein New Order, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, which I think is the DLC for that, and then Wolfenstein Young Blood, um, which is the third game. Yes. And Fallout 4, New Vegas, 60, 76, with the <laughs> with the expansion as well. Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim. If for some reason you haven't played Skyrim, you now use it again. Um, ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, The Evil Within, and Rage 2. All those games are now on Game Pass. You can play most of them, if not all of them, on Game Pass, uh, your Xbox, your console, and cloud. The only game that is n only available for one, for, for just console. New Vegas. Is it? Yeah, I New Vegas. Mm -hmm. yeah, you I noticed that when we paused it. Yeah. I thought it was weird that it was the only one that had the one icon. Yeah, there's another game too that's only, it, you can't do it on the cloud. I think it's Fallout either 4 or, or uh, 76. Either way. So in the fall, it's all in the Fallout. For all, for the, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's all in the Fallout franchise. Yeah. Uh, that's, that thought that was, that was really cool. These, these are a lot, these are great games. These are just, I'm just going to say it right now. Like, Dishonored, the Dishonored franchise is like it. it's it's so underrated like Did i play both i i started playing the second one but i played the first one multiple multiple times i watched the speed run of it and i fell in love with the speed run so i tried speed running it um it's not the same on xbox <laughs> <laughs> but now i could do it on pc so we'll we'll see um what did you think about all these uh 20 games that got added Allie? did any of them excite you i'm a loser who doesn't play but overwatch True. yeah <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I mean, yes, wait, <laughs> anything excites you. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm not here. <laughs> I got like, I, I don't know. I'm yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's really great games in here. Um, I played, I played new Vegas. Cool. I'd be interested in the Dishonored games. And I, I've always, I don't know, I've always like really wanted to play the Doom games. I just never wanted to spend the money. So yeah. I would probably play some of those. And Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. I always want to say Wolfenstein. It's Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing that earlier. I was saying the wrong one and now I'm doubting myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, I'm not super into the Fallout games. Like I did New Vegas and New Vegas was really, really cool. Your computer is restarting. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like I'm sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I played New Vegas because obviously I live in Las Vegas, so yeah. it was. And and everyone was like, "Oh, like the fall games are great," and there wasn't anything wrong with it. It was really interesting to play like the Vegas version. Um, and then I'm not really into like the Oblivion Skyrim. I actually own them and I've never played them. I have some fall games I own that I never played. Um, yeah, I mean. There's, there's there's stuff I would sit down and try. Yeah. And it always goes back into like, I don't have to pay a full $60 for a game. So that's always going to be keep me a little more open minded when I feel the need to try something. There's for games sure. in here. Like, it's primarily like Dishonored Doom. Yeah. Down to, I remember watching, I remember watching like the, the original Doom. I remember my mom, friend's husband. Yeah all computer nerds and they would all like play doom and i remember just sitting there like watching it like being fascinated yeah and i remember being like i could never play a shooter <laughs> thought i'd never get into shooters but I, li I liked watching them that's cool yeah um i and i i mean i downloaded wolfenstein <laughs> literally yesterday so i'm definitely going to give that a try um probably going to finish dishonor 2 um i was playing that on xcloud and that's a hard game to play on xcloud because of the lag and i'll probably give evil within another chance i Got that game, I tried it, and then I just I couldn't I couldn't so I just I just sold it. But yeah, that's uh those are some games that got added to uh Game Pass, and I mean Game Pass in general is a great value. I've talked about we've talked about it so much, and we are kind of Game Pass fanboys, which is funny because I actually never play anything new. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're a fan of the value. I am a fan of the value, and I am a fan of being able to like just try some things, but. I know you you actually really you use it very heavily. I do. So it's it's worth it for us since we only pay for the one subscription. Mm -hmm. And like I said, yeah, like I just I see the I see the value in it. And if I ever feel like expanding my horizons, which I don't because I just have been living in a perpetual loop of 2020 and the same thing for the past like year or two or five. Groundhog's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Allie just lives a groundhog's grounds grounds. I'm losing it today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm finally losing my mind, you guys. Um, yeah, but no, I, I think there's sometimes I'll, you know, <laughs> I'm like, it's like the Netflix thing, right? Sometimes I'll go into Game Pass yeah. and I'll browse. And you know how like in Netflix, a lot of times you'll go in and you'll browse and you'll never actually pick anything? Yeah. I do the same thing, <laughs> the same thing in Game Pass. I'll go in and I'll be like, oh, wow, well, well, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, oh no, that's new. What's new? Well, that's interesting. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm going back to Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not the only one who loves Game Pass. Tom Howard also loves Game Pass. Also loves it. Also, yes. He he actually explained uh, the reasons why. And I think it's really interesting because we see it as a consumer, right? It's like it's such a good value for the consumer, but it's also extremely valuable for the creatives. He explained mm -hmm. that uh, you don't realize how much until you start hearing it from them. You, he said that uh, Game Pass really lets developers get more creative with their work and allows them to, uh, allows gamers to explore different types of games that they may not otherwise have tried before. Basically, because of the commitment of sixty dollars, right? But I would keep saying yes. Um, then I think also the um, I forget her name, Sarah Bond. She also explained that like see, letting like like. Uh, because because uh, developers don't have this like this, like they have this like thing where like they have to sell games like they like it kind of gives them more freedom and creativity as to do some weird or like cool things that they may have not tr otherwise tried because they had that expectation of being able to sell games. And I mean, they talked about it so many times before where developers put their games on Game Pass, it gets exposure, people play them and then it just benefits them even more. Right. So I think it's great that like it it just kind of allows the developers to try new things and try things that may not otherwise have been approved right by higher ups because it was too risky and um uh, and then also players can get out of the comfort zone and just try new things you know like i know for me like i i always heard great things about control but i didn't want to pay 60 dollars for it as as messed up as it sounds but it's just because we have we have necessities that we need to take care of as opposed to just buying games every month right like back when we were younger, I'd buy I'd buy every collector's editions of Halo or Ma you know Ma Mass Effect, whatever I could because I had money to blow. But as adults, I we don't really have that luxury to be able to spend a bunch of money on video games. So having game control on Game Pass was just like it was so good for me because I could at least try to play it. 
I'll have any idea how expensive prenatal appointments are before you <laughs> before you have the baby. Woo wee. Woo 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 wee. Woo wee. <laughs> um, it also allows games to have a second chance uh, at life, kind of like Fallout seventy six. Uh, I mean, Destiny two is also on on Game Pass as well, including all the expansions, and No Man's Sky is on Game Pass. Um, and it just kind of breathes a fresh l- new life into those games and ge- lets players give them a second chance, right? As opposed to everyone who bought 76 at full price. Now people can go on Game Pass and play 76 and give it a give it a go. So they, they've seen big success with that game being on Game Pass. And it also uh, shows how, how close the connection of Bethesda and Xbox were because they were originally one of the first earlier adopters of game pass and putting their games on game pass so um again oh just going back full circle as to just how strong the relationships are well it makes all of that makes sense when you think about like you said there's giving like games second life and being able to be creative and stuff because what it seems like is they're getting a consistent funnel of money versus it all it like you said it all depends on how good that game does at launch yeah. and how good the life cycle of that game actually is like you're not putting all your eggs in that one basket of um okay we're spending all this money on this game yeah we're not putting all- <laughs> <laughs> we're not putting you know like yeah like we're putting all of our money into into a game's development with no guarantee we'll get what we spend back which then leads to of course you making these decisions on you know well i want to try this thing well no don't do that because if they don't like it the game's not going to sell yeah it seems like if you have your entire library on there and you're getting portions of the playtime or however they divide it out um and then of course if people really like it the more people playing i'm sure the more money they're getting from that so it is just kind of that like whole that if all your eggs in that one basket of yeah. what you're developing now, things that you've created in the past are doing their due diligence as well. Yeah. And, you know, the things you're making, even if it doesn't make as much money as you maybe want it to, maybe it will in the future if you're able to continue to develop on that like they are with 76. Or like like you said, they're able to do something like, well, we wouldn't have normally done this game, but like we wanted to try something a little different to maybe push it forward. It seems just like, yeah, like that consistent, it sounds like that consistent flow of money from Game Pass, and then on top of now being bought out by Microsoft, they have probably even more money to kind of flow towards them. Since it's not like well, we're, they're not giving money to a company that's going to also develop for other other companies without getting a benefit from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it just it just seems like it's kind of like going in. You can see how that maybe I I was I was always kind of back and forth. I'm like I could see it almost limiting companies, which was my concern in the very very beginning. Yeah. Because I was like, well, if, if they're only getting like a little bit of money per per gameplay, they're not going to have enough to support it. And if they're not getting enough to support it when compared to that $60 price tag, it's just interesting to see that that idea was wrong and that these companies really like it. And that they're probably making more money than they would have on that $60 price tag because like it goes into the more people are playing it, more people are supporting it. You mess up in the beginning. If people hear it's good but they and they don't have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. I feel like i'm rambling but no yeah no that's like, exactly that's exactly yeah, it, yeah. it's i guess that's that's it's it's good that it's been proven to be successful because in the beginning i did have some doubts on it i was yeah. like i don't think this is gonna last i don't think these companies are gonna make enough money i don't i don't know so it's nice to hear the companies like it and it is benefiting them and it's making them more creative yeah that's i think that's what's exciting as like a player is you're not did i forget to record no you're good oh my god you were looking back and i was like oh no, no let me just real quick I guess I'm just really excited to like know that you can hear it from um, Microsoft. Oh, our companies love it. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, right, like what you hear at the big companies, our employees love everything about this place. And you go and you listen to the employees and they're like, this freaking blows. Yeah. They won't listen to me. It's nice to hear it from them because it's also not only Bethesda that said it. Like you said, it's been other companies that aren't owned by Microsoft. Yeah. That have also made these comments about it being a good thing for them. So I just... I'm rambling, but I'm excited that it can, it can give a game that needs more help, like 76, a new life and, and the funds they need to fix it instead of going the anthem direction where <laughs> this is just a money pit. Yeah, They can look at this and go, 
it's not a money pit yet. We're able to fund it because of all these other things bringing in cash. And then just the, the hopeful creativity. Yeah. If they feel like they're being, they're able to be more creative because of how they're being funded. That's nothing but good news for gamers. For sure. Uh, he also talked about backwards compatibility being really crucial. Um, he says, you have no idea how like games and unlike movies don't really hold up as well. No, I mean, we, we see it with like, <laughs> you know, beloved games that you thought were amazing as a kid, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, like Jet Set Radio, uh, Pokemon uh, Snap, you uh, know, even Spyro yeah. or anything like that. Oh like, yeah. They're uh, terrible now. Yeah. You try, you go back and try to play them and they, they just don't hold up. And unlike movies where they can hold up can. Jurassic Park, you know, Star the original Star Wars, uh, uh, the original trilogy that came out and like yeah Any, like anything those. that wasn't in that weird we're trying out cg period is pretty yeah. pretty good uh-huh <laughs> um but he says that like having the technology now and being able to play those games a seamlessly right the fact that you don't have to pop in a disc or you know download it or whatever like you literally just download the game and you're playing it you all they also get enhanced resolution sometimes you can play up to 4k the fact that you can play 4k morrowind that came out Back in the original uh, Xbox days, like that's pretty huge, and the technology of uh, FPS boost, which they also said that are that is going to be able to come to some some games as well, which I think that's that's great. And he just he just explained how like amazing that is, and just like you hear all these great games that you know they play people played in the past, not like now it's easier than ever to do that. And I think it's also really important when it comes to down to like game preservation because like nintendo's notorious about like being really bad about game preservations and like you can only play them on that one system and that one thing and then that's it like the original form like but yeah and uh did you have anything to add on that just the fact that too with backwards compatibility that most of these games you're not having to pay for and that when you do boot them up and they're awful you're not disappointed and spent money because yeah. as much as i love jet set radio that's very much how i feel having bought it on steam and I'm not going to I'm not going to like be like, oh, this plays like shit. So Steam, can you give me I'm not going to take yeah. advantage of their uh, refund policy, their refund policy, which I probably could have. Yeah. But it's just like the fact of like if you boot it up and it just is like this is uh, then you're not like you're not out anything more than your time. Because like I said, for me, Jet Set Radio, which is why I always keep being like, I really want a, a reboot or remaster or something because it just it just plays so bad. I remember it was hard to play at the time. But you didn't realize how hard until until um, games got so seamless. You're used to like modern. Yeah, like, controls. it's yeah. it's it's it, it was hard enough back then. Yeah. But uh, like I said, yeah. So it's like that is just like a nice thing about backwards compatibility, too, is it's like. If you get that nostalgia kick and it just isn't working, you're not out anything more than your mm -hmm. your, than your time. Yeah. And your time. Yeah. And your download. Mm -hmm. The only downside I, I always talk about. Uh, they also talked, uh, they'll tease a little bit that they're going to have like an e E3 style presentation scheduled for sometime this summer. And it will be. <laughs> and she was like, when does summer end? Yeah. <laughs> so that means I wouldn't hold your breath towards the beginning. I wouldn't hold your breath for June. Yeah, they did. But they are, <laughs> they did say that. Basically. I'm just saying, you know, we always talk about expectations on this show. Um, Yeah, just please, don't, like, don't, when June 21st comes, don't be like, all right, all right, Bethesda. Like, because she was very much like, summer, hold on, when does summer? yeah summer ends okay yeah summer so yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it's still in the works so don't hold your breath for it being like too soon i would say midsummer to end of summer yeah. but it does sound like they're doing a thing together as opposed to how they used to where it was xbox did their own show but that's it did their own show so, yeah that makes sense um, some people had some questions about that so that's good that they clarified it um <laughs> but that is managing itself that's kind of what we already assumed that they were going to be doing they're basically like like we you're a part of xbox but you guys just keep doing what you're doing another check mark for us i think we had that in our predictions too yeah they're baiting the xbox isn't going to meddle into their development but that is pretty much going to manage itself um with the added bonus of microsoft's resources uh microsoft's technology x cloud a bunch of you know backwards compatibility fps boost resources from other studios maybe we can get some collaborations going you know and most importantly, money. With their resources and their stipulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, On what will be an exclusive and what won't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, I mean, that's the only down, downside for them. But uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it just, it sounds, 
I, I don't want this to come out like shallow that like the only thing that's great you know it's money but like dude like the fact that they like we said they can literally just do whatever they want like as far as like being creatives and they can just do whatever and have the backing of microsoft and and money like where we it's it's no it's no surprise no it shouldn't be a surprise that like they can just help them out as much as possible because of what happened with halo infinite the fact that that game got delayed a year like that so much money that they had to like now invest even more into another year of development they had they're gonna have to do all the remarketing stuff like <laughs> like uh, mark doritos the, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the monster energy drinks for halo 5 still came out the pringles moa burger still came out <laughs> like <laughs> they're gonna have to redo it again <laughs> So like the fact that like, you know, that's a good example as to like they're they're just backing up their studios at, from from just like a consumer standpoint or just from oh, someone outside looking in. It could be completely opposite. I don't know. But from my uh, from my perspective, if it seems like that's one of the most beneficial things from this acquisition is now because the studios have the resources to be able to just do whatever they want. And I'm really excited about collaborations because they already talked about how their studios within themselves like to collaborate and they see each other's works and they're fans of each other's works and they help each other out there was like an enemy in uh doom 2016 that was created by tango gameworks like the people in in tokyo <laughs> the people who did the evil within and they're you know like and uh arcane and and um machine games work really closely together because they're big fans of each other's games like so having that I think is really, really cool because now they're introducing that into other developers as well. And can you imagine like the next, you know, Halo or Gears or like anything like that work running on the id, so uh, uh, the id engine or like, I don't know, Master Chief and Doom guy team up or something like the possibilities are endless. Like there's a lot of collaborations that I'm excited about. Sorry, I'm 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 rambling now, but I uh, hearing all that it just made me feel really good about the future of of this acquisition do you have any thoughts on that no not not on that in particular i do i again i'm the only thing is it's i'm i'm glad for them managing themselves yeah that's i've just come to be a person who really rallies for that after seeing every time the publisher gets too involved it just ruins the quality of these games and these companies just like the past 10 years, it's just been so obvious. So anytime I see they're going to let them manage themselves, they're going to let them make their own decisions. I rally behind that and I'm, 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 I'm happy. Like that's kind of all I ask for all these acquisitions <laughs> anymore now is like, please don't interfere. Like yeah. we really just you <laughs> not. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts on this before we get into what games you should play? Yeah. I think I think I've rambled in my brain enough. <laughs> no worries. I don't know how to word or <laughs> or function today. All right, so we'll we'll end. This, this is what happens. See, I you when you get pregnant, if you don't, I don't even have kids yet, and my brain is already broken. Oh my gosh! I, I didn't nap today. I think that's what this is. I think it is too. I've turned into a, I need a nap every day. Okay. Well, I'll uh, end a little quickly now. No, you're uh, good. <laughs> you're like, I don't want you to look too dumb. Huh? <laughs> I'll save you some. <laughs> I'll save you some of your uh, thing. Embarrassment. I'll save you some embarrassment. Thing. Okay. Um, if you have a Game Pass and you are a fan of Bethesda or have never played a Bethesda game, um, there are some games that I probably wouldn't recommend for you. And I'd say Dishonored. Sonored franchise is super fun. Um, you can pretty much play however you want to play. You can be an assassin. You can be a stealth. You can literally play the entire game without killing any of the bosses, which is amazing. Um, completely pacifist, you can do it. Such a really under, underrated game. Doom Eternal is also an insane uh, FPS. It's a great soundtrack, and it's really challenging. It's not just like... You go into a room and you shoot things like, yeah, you do. But it's like a rock, paper, scissors kind of a thing where like, sorry. No, I was, I was saying, I think that's, I'm, I'm excited for Doom Eternal. Yeah. I, I've been wanting to play that since it released. It's, it's, it, it, yeah, it's not a mindless shooter. That's all I'm going to say. There is uh -huh. a lot of strategy that Love goes that. into it. So, 
I don't like mindless shooters. Okay, then yeah, I'm just saying there's some strategies that involve so, and it's it's just brutal. Like it's really brutal. If you're a fan of RPGs, uh, either one way or another, you could do the Fallout series. Uh, specifically Fallout New Vegas, I hear is the the pinnacle of it, done by Obsidian, which is hilarious because that's the only game that they did. Or I think they did the original two, but Obsidian did uh, Fallout New Vegas. They recently did the Outer Wilds, and now that they they're in the, under the same house. Maybe we'll get a, a Fallout New Vegas too. So play that. And uh, Oblivion is also a really good game for uh, the Elder Scrolls series. Unless you want a newer title, then play Skyrim. But I'm assuming everybody's already played Skyrim. So we'll go check out Oblivion. And the entire Wolfenstein franchise. Wolfenstein franchises. Uh-oh. Yeah, one's Look what I did. <laughs> messed it up. Look what I did. Um, I Like I said, I'm actually going to play uh, the new order. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I, I want us to, I want you to also play it too. Because then we can try to get through together for the story. And then we can play Youngblood together. Because that's okay. a co-op game. Down. Sweet. Any recommendations you have? Um, No. Because like I said, out, out of all of that, I've only really played New Vegas. Yeah. Oh, then, and again, the thing with new, the thing is, I'm not a big RPG fan. That's true. When I bought New Vegas, I didn't really know that. I, I like, I think I've said this on past podcasts where I really like thought I was gonna like RPGs, and I really thought that was the kind of game that I needed to play, and I just thought that was the person I was, and I realized eventually, no, I'm not an RPG person. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was still good, and like, just going back into like, oh, we live in Vegas, like it's. It's really interesting because it's actually like accurate as it can be in a Fallout yes. setting, like yeah. where everything is, some of the little details in it. So like it was really interesting as someone who lives in Vegas to like explore places yeah. and understand like places that are complete. like Nelson's Landing is in there. Like Prim too. Prim is in there too. Well, well but Prim, like yeah. people from California drive through. Oh, they well, know what yeah. that is. Who knows what Nelson is unless you're looking to get married? No one. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that. So I, I found I found the atmosphere really interesting as someone who can relate to every oh, every single place that that they listed in there, um, but I'm not a huge RPG fan. I I still enjoyed my time with it though because I did put a lot of time into it to you know explore and and it was it was fun. Yeah. So I, I definitely like I said I'm just not an RPG fan. But if you do like RPGs and you and you've played any of the Fallout, I would assume you would like New Vegas. Yeah. Hit I up, just am- hit up Justin. He will talk your ear about New Vegas. <laughs> uh, he loves that game so much. And just a lot of like really interesting nuances from that game. And a lot of like really interesting gameplay mechanics that like you, it just kind of blows your mind. Um, yeah. I see. And I don't, I don't know enough about RPGs yeah. or even the other like um, fallouts to really have more of an opinion than, yeah, it was, it was cool. Yeah. And like I said, and then I, I've, I've never played a lot of Bethesda games. Yeah. Again, because a lot of RPGs, a lot of just just in the game genres, I don't really play. For sure. And then, like I said, the ones that I, I have been interested, I've just never gotten around to. Been interested in Doom since I was really young. The issue with Doom is for a long time it was PC only. That's true. I don't know. I don't know when it turned to console, but I knew it was like like when I was growing up, it was PC only. Yeah. That's just why I just never had that, again, entry opportunity. And then when I did, I was kind of like, well, I don't have money to spend. Yeah. Well, now it's on <laughs> so, the podcast. Yeah. So now's the time. So I'm not recommending it, but I'm excited for Doom. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> ah, doom. <laughs> All right, girl. All right. And that's it for this week's episode of Power On Weekly. Let me know what you guys thought about the Methesda. Meth- <laughs> Bethesda, <laughs> micro Thesda deal, and uh, what games are you excited to see from this acquisition, this deal? Uh, if you have Game Pass, what game did you uh, boot up in order to celebrate this acquisition? Let me know in the comments below, and I hope you guys had a good time with us. We always have a good time with this episode, or with this uh, podcast. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye. <laughs>